glad to be here on social media. When's the last time someone asked you, read any good books lately? I mean, maybe 20 plus years, right? I mean, who needs books when we have Twitter, Instagram, TikTok? We don't need books. I used to go to this place called Acres of Books, a warehouse stacked to the rafters with used books on any topic you could think of. They had it all, even the Rip Van Winkle, you know, the man who slept 100 years through the revolution. He was there. Um, you know, you'd wake him up from his nap and you'd ask him a question. He'd never have an answer for you. I digress, sorry. Acres of Books had a smell of mildew, mothballs, and a bit of cat pee. It was wonderful. And I'd walk through the aisles and run my hands across all the hard covers from the early 20th century. You know, the gold embossed lettering. I'm a tactile person, if you haven't guessed. Even my husband thinks I would do well with the activity apron they use for the old people in the ER so they don't pull out their life support. So I got a bell over here and a zipper here and there's some Velcro here and a little fuzzy thing I can pet right here. Tangent City over here, get used to it. At Acres of Books, it was even more marvelous when I'd find a 19th century leather bound book, so rare. The pages all faded yellow and tiny font because that's better for your eyes when reading by candlelight. I'm pretty sure I found my first Madame Blavatsky book there. You know, those were the days I was obsessed with William Butler Yeats, you know, the Irish mystic poet and his obsession with transmediumship. You know, calling beyond the veil stuff, getting info from the other side. Got really into that for a while. You never know what info they have for you. I mean, where should you go for your next meal? Which car should you buy? You know, which career to pursue? You know, the normal questions we all have. You guys probably have questions as well, like who's going to win the World Series or uh, who's my boyfriend or girlfriend sneaking around with or what's the best place in town for a good massage? All important questions. And you guys thought you came here tonight to hear me talk about my favorite sex positions? Anyway, welcome. I'm Tara Bud, your local bookworm, mystic, you know, ordinary Gen Xer on my fifth career. Mm -hmm. When I was in undergraduate school, for all you millennials and Gen Zers, yeah, pre-home computers, when you actually had to go to the library and pull books off the shelves and research and write your paper, then use the typewriter to make it neat for the teacher. Now, for all you Gen Zers out there, the typewriter is an analog machine that has levers each time you strike the key, it hits the paper, not a screen, made from wood. Okay, there's no control Z, no copy paste, no spelling up. Fun fact, Tom Hanks collects typewriters. You gotta wonder what he does with all those. I mean, stare at them, marveling at how much work it was, or maybe show off some of his friends how amazing he is, or type a love letter to his wife. Okay, I digress. I miss the sixth floor library where it was all hush-hush and you could even hear a candy wrapper being crinkled. I love that place. It felt safe. <sighs> so yeah, that, that building kept me sane because meanwhile, my mother thought I was studying for the real estate license. Too bad I turned out better than she imagined. Okay, we're jumping timelines here, so get used to it. One time I was in Toulouse, France, checking out some random book vendors in the streets. I like this. Yeah, France was amazing. The crepes, the croissants, the wine, the burlesque nightclubs. But I was on the hunt for rare books. And so began my new age journey with the hardcover Carlos Castaneda's A Separate Reality. I remember it was a purple fabric cover. No smudges, impeccable first issue. I carried that book in my 50 pound backpack all through Europe and back to California. I mean, who does that anymore? My college traveling buddy was more realistic. She bought a Spanish ceramic teapot set and stuffed that with sweaters and socks for all those months. And, oh wait, <laughs> that was me. <laughs> no shame, I collect teapots. Another time I was in Dublin, I mean, not Dublin, California, Dublin, Ireland, at a bookshop. And I found my first edition of Carol Lewis's Alice in Wonderland, 
a small hardcover, easily packable into my rolly bag. For those of you that haven't read it, you probably saw the movie version with Johnny Depp as a Mad Hatter and Helena Bonham Carter playing the queen. Well done, Hollywood. Preserving our literary canon, gold star. Someone has to since we just don't read anymore, right? But I've read all the New Age books. I mean, who hasn't, right? Be Here Now by Ram Dass. Excellent book. Amazon delivery needs to read this right away. They have really been slacking lately. Are your packages taking longer than normal? I mean, some even get lost, right? Or is that the US Postal Service? I mean, they're really slipping. While all my bills come after the due dates? Well, where have our priorities gone, civilization? You know, as a child, I was a stamp collector, but now I'm a bill collector. I mean, who isn't, right? But seriously, the US mail should do better. They should be funded, right, America? This is America. Okay. You know, Amazon used to uh, deliver books before they delivered flip-flops, bird seed, and toothpaste. God forbid we drive to the store, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, I digress. No, I digress severely. Fair warning, sometimes my English lessons get in the way of finishing a sentence, and severely is an adverb. But seriously, back to my reading list. I was in Tacoma, Washington, don't ask me why, at a great vinyl store, and they had quite a collection of vinyl plus super great spiritual self-help section of books. Mind you, they were all brand new books that people hardly glanced at. There I found Catching the Big Fish, Meditation, comma, Consciousness, comma, and Creativity by David Lynch. Just the title itself intrigued me. It was a gem of a book. It melded making movies with transcendental meditation. It was amazing. The guys, <clears throat> you guys have heard of Maharishi, right? You know, the Beatles went to India to learn meditation from him. How many of you practice transcendental meditation? Okay, some of you are embarrassed to admit it, or maybe not that many at all. No shame, no blame. For me, it was comforting to think that Bill Murray and David Lynch and me all sitting down to practice daily meditation, I felt so connected to the oneness of it all. And you know how rare that is to feel oneness? I mean, when you're getting your car washed and you're sitting all cozy in your car cabin and those brushes are washing everything negative away, or maybe watching a sunset on the San Clemente Pier and you see a whale pass by and you think it's a sign from above. But seriously, everything's a sign at this point in life. Am I right, people? When you need a sign, if you pay attention, you usually receive it. You think you're done with acting, then you get an audition. That's a sign. You're burnt out on doing psychotherapy, but you keep doing it, though you feel it's killing your life force until your acupuncturist tells you, if you don't change your job, he won't be able to keep bringing you back to life. That's a sign. And uh, you wonder if you should keep dating someone, and then you get a sign from the universe when you meet your friend's cousin and sparks are flying. That's a sign. Um, you know, you need to exercise, but oh, you're so lazy. Then you get offered a free personal trainer from the gym as a trial. That's a sign. I love signs from the universe. <laughs> Anywho, David Lynch, the book blew my mind. He's amazing. He was writing about creativity and everything else. Definitely another book that kept me sane. More like the meditation kept me sane. Yeah, you know, less judgment, more grounded, and definitely having less expectations of people. I mean, I'm expecting all of you to walk out, change the screen, slash forward. I can't believe you guys are still here. <laughs> Lately, I read Becoming Supernatural by Joe Dispenza, one of my top favorite manifesting books. But have you ever read so much physics in your life? I mean, God almighty. No, I mean, goddesses. I mean, uh, higher beings. They're all my extended family over here. They're all hanging out behind me. And they're happy I'm here talking to you guys. All right. You know, someone once said to me, you're an only child? Oh, 
that's why you're so weird. Well, yeah, I like to read books and talk to my guys and have some laughs. You're welcome.